Hey guys, what's up? It's going Robin here. Welcome to today's video. Um, good morning. Um, in today's video, I'm going to do a quick little recap of the dividend stock portfolio. I'll show you guys um, how we've been doing in the past couple of days. And I want to talk about a new ETF that I want to add into my portfolio. And then at the end, I'll answer some of you guys' questions and uh, that you left me in the comment section of this video. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the portfolio and I'm going to show you guys some of the dividends that we got so far for this month because they're starting to slowly kind of come in here. And we'll go over the um, regular dividend portfolio first. So in the past day or so, our regular dividend portfolio, so we can get this graph to show, looks like it's not showing for the past day. So let's go in the past week. We can see in the past week that we've dipped down quite a bit. Um, you know, stocks went down quite a bit, Canadian stocks specifically. And then kind of in the past couple of days, we got a little bit of a rise here and uh, we're kind of sitting right here. So hopefully uh, they continue to go back up, but if they don't, and even if they do go back, uh, keep going back down, we're just gonna keep buying more to benefit from that. We are down about $90, which is almost 2% in the past month. So we did go up a little bit. It was sitting about 3% when I did my last video. You know, in the past three months, we are up about 2.75%, uh, which is about $100 and all time on the portfolio. Uh, since we started this portfolio earlier this year in January, we are up $56, which is 1.21%. So up a little bit. Um, Obviously, that went down a bit in the past little while, but we kind of recovered a little bit. Um, and, and like I said, we we bought a couple stocks over the past couple of days, and I'm just going to keep buying. Uh, whether prices go up or down, I keep buying regardless. So that's kind of kind of how I do things. Over to the dividends, we'll check out the dividends we got over the past couple of days because they are slowly starting to come in here. We'll go to the dividends, and we'll include both we'll include both accounts so we can see. Um, how our dividend stocks and our REIT stocks are doing. So just to give you guys a little bit of perspective, if you guys are new to the channel, um, my personal account holds my REIT stocks, and I'm going to talk about that later on and why that's so. Um, and in my TFSA, I have my dividend stocks. I just like to keep them separate so they're easy to track. Uh, but we can see here, you know, um, uh, September 9th is yesterday. Yesterday we got a dividend from VDY, which is three dollars ninety three cents. It's almost four dollars. Um, VRE paid us a dividend of three dollars and twenty cents yesterday, which is pretty sweet. Uh, Real Can gave us a dividend of four dollars and fifty six bucks. So as you guys can see, these are all actually these two are REITs, and this is the dividend portfolio. But these are the ones I've really started to invest a lot into over the past month or so. So you can see it's starting to add up and build up that monthly income. And then we had one from H&R REIT, uh, $2, then a couple a couple more here at the bottom here. So September is already racking up to be a pretty good month. And we already have a lot more dividends coming. In total, I think that's about $20 in total. So we're reinvesting those and buying more stocks. And today I'm gonna go over really quickly uh, some stocks I'm buying. I don't have a lot of funds in my account, but I think I have enough to buy one, one share here in my TFSA. We have about $16 Canadian and I think we will either put that into one of our ETFs or we could put that into one of our higher performing stocks. Um, we have PIF and we have Stereo Corp we can buy. Um, PIF, which is Player Infrastructure Incorporated. Um, this is a stock that kind of has kind of went down. It's got a nice good yield right now. I think this might be a good buy, uh, especially since we haven't bought some shares for a while. So maybe we'll buy one share of this, um, about $13. Yeah, we'll buy one share of this just to use up that money. Let's go. Uh, how do I buy here? For some reason, I think I need to update my app. It seems to be acting a little bit weird here. Um, looks like I can't buy right now. Yeah, there's no buy menu. I'm not too sure what's going on there. Maybe there's a glitch or something. I'll have to come back later and take a peek at this. Um, I also think I need to update the app. On BlueStacks, you have to manually update things. So that might be um, a problem or issue I'm having. Or maybe I just need to restart it. I'll do a quick little restart and we'll see if that fixes the issue. So it looks like it's only doing it for some stocks for some reason. Once again, I'm not too sure. So I'll just grab um, Severia Corp. Um, I'm going to do an update on the app later on after I do this video. Maybe that'll fix that problem. Um, so we'll just buy one share of Severia Corp. It's another great company. In fact, our Severia Corp shares have actually done quite well over the past little while. Um, I'll just take a quick peek, peek here after I buy it. Uh, we'll go in Severia Corp. We can see here that we are currently up about 10%, which is about $9 so far. And they have a pretty good dividend yield, dividend yield about 3%. So uh, they've done pretty good for me. And um, I've had a good time investing into them. Um, let's check over the REITs and let's see if we can buy any REITs for this week. I put I also put $100 into each of these portfolios for the past couple of days. So just kind of waiting for that money to come in over the next couple of days. Then we'll, uh, I'll probably do a video or I'll do a dividend investing case study update the weekly one. In which case, I'll show you guys what stocks I'm buying anyways. So we have $14.34. I think the only one we can really buy is we can buy H&R or Dream Industrial REIT. I'm going to check out H&R and see how that one's been doing. We're up 4.86%, so I think I'm going to buy this one. This is one I've been buying into regularly, and it's been doing quite well, and it's got a really, really high yield, so I'm going to buy one share of that with that. And although we're not buying too many stocks today, 
Um, we do have some transfers going through, so for the next couple of days, we will be able to buy a lot more. Uh, but other than that, the other thing I wanted to mention in this video really quickly, guys, uh, before I end the video, and by the way, if you guys do enjoy this video and you guys like the Canadian-based content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give it a big thumbs up. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to talk about is if we go back into my dividend portfolio, my TFSA, um, we have uh, this fund called XHD, and this is my Canadian Hedged US uh, dividend uh, ETF, basically. It's basically the ETF I was using to buy US funds, and when I first saw this fund, it really attracted me because it had a monthly dividend payout, but I'm starting to think that I might switch this to something else, and I was looking at some different ETFs, and I think I found a good one um, from Vanguard that I think I'm going to start adding to the count, and that is going to be VYM. So VYM is a Vanguard high dividend yield fund. Uh, it is US based and um, it's done quite well. It's got a pretty good returns as you guys see over the past 10 years. It's got an average of 11.8% return per year, which is pretty good. You know, it, it, in comparison to uh, most of the other dividend yields, it's pretty pretty high up there. It's quite good. You know, it's got um, some nice holdings here. You, you see up here, it's got all the, the good US companies and stuff like that. Um, yeah, total number of stocks 426. Fun at Fund total net assets, $34 billion. So, you know, just ton, tons of good companies and whatnot with good dividend yields. It does pay quarterly, which sucks, but I mean, that's okay. I mean, we have tons of monthly dividend stocks. So I don't think that really matters. And the other thing about it is the fees are super cheap. And, and this is something that I really enjoy. It's only got a 0.6% fee for the po for the ETF, while my other one had like a 0.3 or 4% fee. So that's quite significant. Um, so, yeah. I think we're going to go with maybe look into using this one, I think. Um, and I'm not going to worry about he hedging the currencies and stuff like that. We'll just skip that for now. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section of VYM. Uh, but I think it'd be a good little ETF to add to my portfolio. So that's it for a quick little update today, guys. Let's go over some questions that you guys asked me um, and then what in the video. So until I figure out a better way to bring these comments out on screen, I'm just going to go into the actual video and show the comment on here on the screen. I'm sure it doesn't matter for you guys. Uh, but the first one is from Blazing Coder, and he asks, Hey Robin, just a quick question. What, is, what are the main differences between the tax-free savings account and personal account? Um, so the big difference between the TFSA and the personal account is that the TFSA is 100% tax-free, which basically means that any money you earn inside that account is tax-free unless it pays a foreign dividend. So um, just, just do a quick little example here. So if you put 100 bucks into um, US stocks in your TFSA um, and that doubles within a couple of years or something like that, let's just say theoretically, um, if it doubled in value, then, then you sold it, you wouldn't pay any tax on it. But if along the way that stock paid a dividend, um, I think it's about 15% of that dividend is taxed, taxed every time you get paid the dividend. So it is taxed a small amount, but the overall stock appreciation is not taxed. And if you hold Canadian stocks inside your TFSA, nothing is taxed. So um, it, it does make sense to hold Canadian stocks inside your tax-free savings account for that reason, but it also makes sense to hold U.S. Um, stocks inside your tax-free savings account too because they just tend to grow more over time. Um, so I've done a few videos on TFSAs, so check those videos out if you guys want. Maybe I'll link to them in the description of this video. Uh, but that's basically the main difference between the two accounts, why everything inside the personal account is basically taxed, whether it comes to dividends or when you sell a stock. So that's basically the two, two difference. And he also asks, also, why do you hold REITs in your personal account but not in your TFSA? Um, the main reason why I do this is because when I first started the portfolio, I have a main Wolfson Wolf Pool Invest account that I have the bulk of my TFSA contributions in. And then when I was starting my new dividend fund, I wasn't sure what I wanted to keep inside my TFSA because it was appro approaching my limit soon. Um, so I just stuck the REITs outside for now. I should have honestly just stuck it inside the tax free savings account. But once again, I'm not too sure. Going towards the end of this year, I might hit my contribution limit. So I might move things around in December just before the end of the year so that next year I can um, get that contribution room back or I won't get hit by the, the penalty kind of thing. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm not too sure. But that's basically the big difference. One is taxed a lot and the other one is pretty much taxed on everything. So, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, let me know if it didn't. Uh, and by the way, guys, if anybody else wants to see their questions uh, answered in this video, just leave a question in the comment section of this video. Let's do one more question before we end the video and let's um, see what we got here. So the next comment I got is a pretty cool one, and this is from Shane Morgan, and uh, thanks Shane for leaving a comment. And he says, love hearing your thoughts and opinions. What would you recommend investing in with only, say, $300? So this is an interesting question, and there's, you know, you get this question a lot, like, what should I invest if I have $100, if I have $500, if I have $1,000? You 
you know, whatever kind of thing. Now, obviously, if you're dealing with more money, it might be a little bit more important to talk about. But when it comes to $300, I just want to say is that number one, I just want to say congrats on starting with investing, because obviously, if you're just investing $300, you, you might just be brand new uh, kind of thing. So I just want to say congrats to that, because by getting started with investing, um, you're definitely going down the right path. Um, for $300, because $300 isn't a lot of money, I would say it doesn't really matter that much. Um, my recommendation would be to, if you don't already, like I just talked about previously, you start open up a tax-free savings account or something to get yourself started and find some kind of, you know, you could pick an ETF if you want. You could pick an individual stock if you want. Like if you see a nice, good, solid company that's, you know, like some big company or something, you could stick it in there. You could stick it into an ETF. Um, you don't have to worry too much about it because $300 obviously isn't going to make a big difference in the end right but you do kind of want to get yourself going in the right direction kind of thing so pick some solid type etf um you know maybe check out some vanguard ones maybe look at some big us or canadian stocks if you want to go down that route and just pick something to kind of put it in do a little bit of research and then kind of as you learn over time and as you get better with investing um you can put more serious thought thought into it but with 300 dollars, it doesn't really matter that much um, just pick something that's solid that you think is, is pretty good. Like I'll probably go with an ETF maybe uh, if you want to go down that route and just stick with that for now. And then over time as you get, um, as you educate yourself and you learn more and you realize kind of more what you, what kind of portfolio you want, you want, you can maybe fine tune it from there. But like I said, with $300, it's not that big of a deal. What, what the big deal is though, is that you're getting started with investing and that's important. So kudos for you. Um, good job on that and um, keep at it and eventually you'll, you'll get there. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And once again, if you guys enjoyed it, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you guys want more Canadian-based um, content. I'll be doing a update on my YouTube channel. I know some of you guys requested that I do a YouTube channel earnings update. We'll be posting that soon. I just got to do some calculations and some math and stuff like that. And um, I'll do that another day, and I, I will be posting that pretty soon. And then I do have my dividend investing case study. Uh, update which will be coming up over the next couple days so hope you guys enjoyed this little video if you guys have any questions about me or the portfolio uh, be sure to let me know in the comments um, but that's it for today guys i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video take care and i'll see you guys later